I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Gosland. I'm Linda Quinlan, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ. Today is Tuesday, June 28th, and we're taping at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we know is in um, unceded indigenous land. Ann. I have many international headlines, beginning many of them dismal. Oh, then we're moving right on to Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the Rugby League. It joins a clampdown on transgender athletes in women's sport. I'll tell you more about that. Horror on Oslo Parade Day as gunman goes on deadly rampage at gay bar. The Norway shooting suspect thought to be Islamist with mental health issues, so they canceled the parade. Uh, I'm going to just do these headlines and then discuss in detail. Um, I have some news from the UK. Uh, I'll start with a good one. Uh, and I have a picture before you now of a new stamp to celebrate 50 years of pride in the UK. Uh, the Royal Mail has released it. This is one of, I believe, eight stamps. Um, downhill from there. I have a picture now of one of Britain's first transgender paramedics who says patients refuse her help, spit at her, and often ask, what are you, when she comes to their door. There's a picture. This is Steph Meach, who is 53. She's been on in the ambulance corps for uh, 20 years, and I'll tell you more about that. In, and this is just an awful story. Uh, I have a picture now before you of the Thakozani Shiri, who was a man living with HIV. He died in prison because officials refused him life-saving medication. Um, they neglected him and failed to provide the medication. An inquest has found. So this has all been revealed. Uh, there's this picture. I think he, I told you he was 21. Um, Upbeat news as I round up the Europe uh, segment. <laughs> Tens of thousands rally as Warsaw hosts Ukraine's largest pride parade. Of course, <laughs> the parade in, in Ukraine was canceled because of the Russian invasion. Right. So Warsaw, they're merged with Warsaw. Uh, and there's Great. a picture, yes. In Africa, I have a story about LGBTQ plus Nigerians celebrating Pride Month in defiance of the anti-gay law. And the person pictured before you is Kayodi Ani Samdachukwu, who holds a placard at his first, at the first Nigerian LGBTQ plus protest in Abuja in May. Brave people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and they say they're on social media, so things are improving. <coughs> and I have a list of statistics about um, improvement in Nigeria. Um, Asia. Japan court says ban on same-sex marriage is constitutional. Um, I have reported in the past that um, the city of Sapporo, for example, um, put a halt on the, uh, the law, uh, the country's ban on same-sex marriage. But the Japanese court ruled Monday that the country's ban does not violate the Constitution and rejected the demands for compensation by three couples who said their right to free union and equality has been violated. Uh, it's the second decision in the issue and disagrees with the Sapporo um, ruling that I already um, reported on in the past. It under This all underscores how divisive the issue is um, in Japan, which is the only member of the group of seven major industrialized nations that does not recognize same-sex unions. Uh, in its ruling, the plaintiff's demand for 1 million yen in damages was rejected. Two plaintiffs, two male couples and two female couples were among the 14 same-sex couples who filed lawsuits uh, in five major cities. So 
bad news from Japan. Thailand moves on marriage equality. Um, the lower house has approved two marriage equality bills and two civil union bills this month. Uh, this begins a process in, in which the bills will be whittled down to one bill for each type of union and eventually it'll see a final vote. In November 2021, the Constitutional Court upheld the ban on marriage equality. So, movement in Thailand. Um, and I had a clip to accompany this next story, but um, the English subtitles didn't come out. Palestinian activists have banned a concert for, LG, for the LGBTQ community in Ramallah. The performer was Bashar Murad, um, who is gay. Um, they shut down the concert that was scheduled to take place. Um, East Jerusalem singer-songwriter and video artist Bashar Murad was supposed to perform, and he's a really interesting figure. Uh, I looked him up. He's Palestinian and gay and uh, studied in the U.S. and had to move to East Jerusalem because it's so homophobic in Palestine. Uh, the homophobic activists in Palestine were led by Yaman Jarar, the son of a prominent Hamas preacher who famously predicted on YouTube that Israel wouldn't exist in 2012, 2022. He told people that uh, the concert was canceled. There's a guy called Bashar Murad who's supposed to hold a party here today. Bashar Murad is gay. This person is banned from holding a concert. He does not represent any of us or, or any of our free people. We came here to advise you, he says to the audience, in a respectful manner. We are talking to you in a nice way. Don't test our patience. Anyone who dares to harm our religion will be crossing a red line. This is very chilling. He later wrote on Facebook referring to the killing of three Palestinian gunmen in clashes with the Israeli military last week when the young men of Janine, which is where um, the clash occurred, are sacrificing their lives for the beloved homeland. A suspicious group tried to hold a gay party in Ramallah. The group of young men who care about their religion and homeland went to the place of the concert and informed the suspicious party's organizers of the need to evacuate the place and respect the blood of the martyrs. So, um, I have, I can just go forward and do um, my clip of a film from Colombia. Okay. Let's do that now and then I'll Go back, if that's all right with you. Is this the film we're going to want to see? Yes, I think so. It looks very interesting. Okay. It's about a thruple. About a what? Thruple. Yeah. Martina, Laia, and Anto are in a passionate, loving, playful thruple. <laughs> Their relationship replete with backyard barbecues, relentless teasing, and enough dogs to take up any of the space <laughs> left in their double wide king bed faces a test when Layla, multi-talented director Ruth Caudelli, is called away for a long-term project, and Martina and Anto must temporarily reshape their dynamic as just the two of them. As they contemplate the strength and flexibility of their love, the audience is invited into an ever-evolving romance that makes room for envy, loneliness, and the deep affection, and deep affection to coexist without judgment. With typical attention to detail, exquisite portrait photography, and effortless chemistry, <laughs> Petit Mal is, a f is frequent collaborators Caudelli, Verone, and Otolara, the two other actors in the film, at their most intimate and honest. It's a chapter of queer life and queer women's filmmaking steeped in authenticity and introspection, blending documentary and semi-autobiographical fiction to open a window on a uniquely sweet, hopeful vision of inevitable change. So let's take a look at a trailer about this throuple called Petit. And what country? Columbia, Columbia. Petit Columbia, Mal. Okay. okay, but where can we see it? It's on Frameline and you know, playing at various festivals. I have this vague recollection of 
someplace within South America, there was a threesome that were challenging marriage statutes so that the three that. of them... Right. You reported on it. I did. Okay. I did. And this is a different one. This is a, this is a film, uh, auto, semi-autobiographical documentary. All right. They, they, from the they, same country, they, perhaps. They expanded on your reporting. <laughs> it's nice to know South America watches us. Okay, right. so let's take a look at the clip. <laughs> okay. Oof. No. ¿Qué es lo más difícil a la hora de tener un trío amoroso? Pasar tiempo juntas, pero como que sea equitativo. Entonces, ¿qué haces conmigo? Sí. Una de tres. ¿Qué te pasa? Que me acabo de despertar. Que mal si estoy bien, mal si estoy mal. Todo no, está es mal. que estás rarísimo. ¿Estás con alguien? Una de tres. Me quedo sola. Eso que el que siempre me acompañó. Miro el reloj, pasan las horas. Looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. So, July 3rd mm -hmm. is Disobedience Day. Who knew? I'm right there. Yeah. So, here is the trivia question associated with that. This was what is believed to have been the first organized gay pride protest in the U.S., and they came incredibly incredibly close to having the details. We got the city wrong. Stay tuned. So I'm going to make a plug now. Early voting for the primary started last week. If you are interested in the candidates, and you should be interested in the candidates because we have some very interesting out candidates running, please vote in the primary you can get in touch with either your town clerk or the Secretary of State's office to do early voting. They will mail you the ballot. Be sure you read the instructions thoroughly because both the used and the unused have to be returned. You need, you need to sign the envelope and they need to be received at your town clerk on or before August 9th, which is primary day. So, Rainbow Umbrella, any, yeah. any updates? No. no. <laughs> if you're interested in, in talking, if you want interested in talking about books or women's discussion group, go onto the Facebook page and, and see what you can find. Okay, let me just jump in then. The book group that we share with Momentum is reading Michelle T's fabulous collection of essays against, against memoir. Yeah. All right. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so. In the process of always looking for who is new to our community and who is doing what for work, I have stumbled across an organization in Rutland called Social Tinkering. Now, as we had reported on previous shows, the Rutland LGBTQ community had merged with Queer Connect in Bennington mm -hmm. to do one organization. Well, based upon the different tracks that they were taking, Rutland has started doing their own work, and Bennington is just focusing on their county. And social tinkering was started by Jeanette, who is a fascinating woman, who said she moved to Vermont and wanted to create safe communities, okay. safe spaces, 
so that we can all come together and create an inclusive environment where everyone is welcome, everyone is supported, and there's something that reaches out to all of us specifically. So even though they have a community-wide focus, they have a very active LGBTQ program and component. And this is the group that has been sponsoring all of the pride activities in Rutland that, you know, at the Chaffee Art Center and in downtown. And they have been ensuring that there is an LGBTQ plus presence mm -hmm. in community events. And one of the things that they've sponsoring that we're going to have to try and connect with is Crystal Queer podcast. Ooh. The goals of the podcast are to increase places and spaces where LGBTQIA2S folks can feel seen, heard, and supported, increase understanding between LGBTQIA2S allies and those learning about the social issues surrounding this subject. Mm take a potentially intimidating and complex social topic and break it down and start at the beginning, acknowledging that people don't inherently know the depths of experiences that haven't been through themselves. And they were looking at all of the conversations you know, that are being bounced back and forth relative to the transgender community, the accusation that we're grooming, you know, what's happening with youth and giving people an opportunity to talk about, here's our experience. This, this is what we have to share with you. Without killing Even, each other? Without killing each other. Mm -hmm. Well, that should be Just. interesting. And it's available on YouTube. Okay. So watch all things LGBTQ, and then tune in to Crystal Queer. Crystal Queer. Notice I pronounced that slowly. Yeah. So if you're watching this on Saturday, July 2nd, Sunday, July 3rd, put on your best outfit. Come join us to march in the July 3rd parade. Yeah, that's right. We, we have we'll be a... we there with our truck decorated. And the Fox Market minivan. Right. And, and, and I'm told there's going to be a Jeep with music. Oh, good. Oh, uh, good. And, and the Central Vermont Pride people are loaning us the rainbow flag, so... Come, let's, yeah. let's look glorious. Pride Center of Vermont is starting to sponsor some ongoing events <coughs> that has sort of fallen by the wayside, but they're bringing back. The first one is on Saturdays from 4 to 6, the Gay Volleyball League. Now, I, re I remember this from my youth, and it was absolutely hysterical. Gay, bi, and transgender men in mildly competitive sport. I'll challenge that statement. But it, and it's a weekly event. Mm -hmm. Come, have a good time. All right. And then, then they're starting on Mondays from 6 to... And th this is an in-person thing. You know, virtual volleyball doesn't make it for me. <laughs> Mondays, 6 to 8 p.m., and this is also an in-person event, Rooftop Writers... Hmm. This is LGBTQ plus writers sharing their work and getting feedback huh. on what it is that they're creating. Why Rooftop? That's the name of the group is Rooftop Writers. Uh, do they meet on a rooftop? Or? I don't know. We don't know. Linda will have to find out <laughs> for us. to check it out. <laughs> on Saturday, July 16th is the Mad... Pride Parade in Burlington, noon to 3 p.m., meet at Maine and College, and this really is psychiatric survivors oh. who, and they're, because the LGBTQ plus community is disproportionately impacted by institutionalization and coercion, and come March, re reclaim your public <coughs> space, reclaim your life. Sounds good. Queer Connect. First Thursday of each month is their Sapphic Story Hour, and they're also doing a reader and writer writing roundtable. I did see that. Virtual events. And on future shows, I'm going to be giving more detail, but Saturday, July 30th, is White River Junction's <coughs> Pride Parade. 
on Sunday, July 31st, Babes is sponsoring Black Wave Dance Party in conjunction with the local tattoo and body art. We may, have to, we may have to go. And then keep in, in mind, Fox Market in East Montpelier has ongoing events. And if you're watching this, you missed the Southern Barbecue. Oh, I would have liked that. And wouldn't have. But I'm a vegetarian. There you no, go. I would have loved that. We could have roasted an ear of corn for you. <laughs> we could have roasted a tofu. You've gone too far. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of the patriotic and the 3rd of July parade here. <clears throat> I was reading someone said that all women should take a knee the next time the national anthem is played. I agree. Oh, I like that. And so yeah. I think we should all keep that in mind. And when we hear the national anthem and we're outside, we should take a knee. I haven't heard the national anthem. <laughs> I don't go to sports events. I guess that's where. Oh, well, they play them other places, I think. Like, I don't know where. But anyway, if you're out, take a knee. I like that. <clears throat> well, now that Roe Ro versus Wade has been overturned, what does this mean for the LGBT community? There's been a lot of talk about this. Mm. Um, and um, also contraception, same-sex marriage, will probably be in the crosshairs of the Republican Party. And um, so, I mean, Clarence Thomas said that. Well, mm -hmm. he did say that. I'm getting to that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun. The guilty will be named. <laughs> <laughs> and according to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, he wants them to re-examine all of, you know, gay marriage contraception. And, um, of course, there's an argument that if you've gotten rid, rid of one privacy um, component, you can go after the others. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. There, and uh, also, what? Clarence Thomas said, um, the, Republic, the Democrats have tortured me for 43 years. I hope to live another 43 years to torture them. Oh, that's awful. <clears throat> so, uh, um, so that's that one. Nice. LBGT Pride events offer a make or break moment for monkeypox. Oh. As of today, there have been 170 cases in the United States. The vast majority are among gay and bi men. And pride organizations around the country are trying to strike a balance between helping to educate and avoiding social stigma right. towards people who get it. So... Well, and connected with the, the monkeypoxes, you know, they are coming out with more information about the meningitis outbreak in Florida and that it is more extensive than what they originally thought. And because they were focusing on gay, focusing on men who have sex with men, they missed the entire college population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And they're the ones who usually get it. Yes. So, mm -hmm. And an interesting story about... Shake Shack. Has anybody heard of Steak Shake Sh Shack? Yes. Okay. It's serving up burgers with a heap of anti-LGBTQ policies yep. for using Martin's famous potato rolls. And because he gave billions to Republican Senator of Pennsylvania's running for governor. And this is Doug Mastriano. Yeah. As a senator, he has supported LGBTQ bills anti-LGBTQ bills yeah. to ban transgender people from playing sports and a bill to force trans people to use public restrooms matching their gender assigned at birth. He also endorsed legislation that would stop same-sex couples from getting married, and he also attended Trump's Stop the Steal rally. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that... There's more? He paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to bus people to the rally. And he's running for office. Yeah. He's running for governor. Yeah. Against Fetterman? Yeah, he's running. Yeah. Yeah. Republicans want to let unsupportive parents sue doctors mm. who treat their trans children. 
A group of senators would deny federal funds to any gender affirmative medical care for trans individuals. Um, Pack an overnight bag. The, the Canadian border's not that far away. And I've got my yeah. Newfoundland pride shirt. We're there. Yeah. Uh, there is now an aromantic flag. <laughs> I have a picture which I will show you. There are individuals who feel no romantic attraction to anyone. And now they have their own flag. Good. <laughs> Gay Republicans complain oh. because the GOP doesn't accept them, <clears throat> even though they oppose LGBTQ <laughs> rights. They, yeah, they've been saying <clears throat> for years, oh, you know, LGBTQ rights, equality, oh, it's not that important, and now they're being pushed out of the party, and they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they hate trans civil rights. Yeah. So they're in agreement there. Mm -hmm. and twenty And for 20 years... They have been trying to get a booth at the Texas Republican Party convention, which they have been denied every single year. This is the log cabin Republicans? Yes. So you think... Or whatever name they're using. <laughs> you know, you think... They'd get the hint. They'd get the hint. By, they're not welcome. <laughs> but for some reason, they don't. So the Social Advocacy and Committee Community Engagement Organization announced it will... Open the new Stonewall National Museum's Visitor Center. Yeah, that's right. Yes. The center will be at 51 Christopher Street in New York yep. City. Right next door to the I bar. Know. And gay activist and writer Jeffrey Escoffier has died. He was 79. Escoffier. Escoffier? Mm -hmm. Okay. He created public health campaigns and is being remembered as a radical intellectual intellectual and renaissance man oh yeah he was really important yeah. and uh, my last story for right now is police say a man killed his lover and burned the corpse to hide their relationship it's a tragic horrible a man has been arrested in philadelphia kylan pratt 20, 20 was taken into custody for the murder of nassau johnson who was also 20. So mm. that's horrible. Okay. Well, I hear I can return in greater detail to some of my dismal news, but um, instead I thought I'd switch gears and um, do something negative. No, I'm. Going I thought to talk your about, headlines were depressing enough. Well, not <laughs> I've uh, I haven't asked Linda's permission. I've just taken the liberty of announcing the 2022 Lambda Literary Award winners. And there are so many categories and so many winners, I can only go through a few, but I'm going to do it sequentially on various shows to come. <laughs> She's so, an outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> what an outlaw, that's right. She's formidable. On June 11th, the winners of the 34th annual Lambda Literary Awards were announced. Uh, they were selected by a panel of over 60 literary professionals from more than 1,300 book submissions from over 300 publishers. The uh, winners I'm going to tell you about tonight are as follows. Lesbian Fiction, Sky Falling by Mia McKenzie, published by Random House. And Julie Enzer, a frequent guest on this show, ah. says this is a really good novel. Yeah. Do you know it, Linda? I sound it sounds familiar to me. I don't know I, I know it. I was thinking that you had mentioned it before, but okay. we're talking to Julie. Yeah, possibly. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, gay fiction: A Hundred Boyfriends by Brontes <laughs> Purnell, Ferrar Strauss, and Giroux. Do you know any of that? No, but we know Keith. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Bisexual fiction. We Want What We Want <coughs> by Alex Olin, House Anansi Press. Transgender Fiction, Summer Fun by Jean Thornton, Soho Press. On to nonfiction, bisexual nonfiction, Borealis by Aisha Sabatini, Sloan Coffee House Press. Transgender nonfiction, Belly of the Beast, The Politics of Anti-Fatness as Anti-Blackness. That sounds really interesting. Mm. Deshaun L. Harrison, uh, published by North Atlantic Books. 
LGBTQ nonfiction. And I can't rave about this enough. Let the record show oh. a political history of Act Up New York, yep. 1987 to 1993 by Sarah Schulman, yeah. Farrow, Strauss, yeah. and Giroux. Yep. Lesbian poetry, nonfiction, which is a strange category. Yeah. Let's just say lesbian poetry. Yeah. Last Days by Tamiko Bayer, Alice James. Gay poetry, punks. New and Selective Poems <laughs> by John Keane, published by The Song Cave. Mm. Bisexual Poetry, Gumbo Yaya by Oriel Marie, University of Pittsburgh Pitt Poetry Series. Transgender Poetry, Crossbones on My Life by Mason J. Nomadic Press. Huh. More to come. Good. It's, you know, the, yeah. so many categories and so many winners. Okay, um, let's go to the back to the rugby league if I All have right. time. Um, it banned transgender players from women's international competition on Tuesday uh, until further notice following global swimming uh, decision to um, bar trans athletes from participation at an elite level. Uh, the international rugby rugby league league said it needed to further consult and balance gender participation against perceived risk to other players. There is no perceived risk to other players. This is just transphobia. <laughs> Until further research is completed to enable the IRL to implement a formal transgender inclusion policy, male to female trans women players are unable to play in sanctioned women's international rugby league matches. They said in a statement, the ban, which comes after FINA voted on Sunday to restrict transgender athletes in elite women's swimming, it was condemned by transgender advocates and sports people. It's disappointing. We're human beings the same as everyone else. Transgender woman Carolyn Late, who played elite women's rugby in Australia, said after she played it after transitioning. It just tells trans kids and trans adults that you're not worthy. Don't even bother. Don't even bother showing up. What's the point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other sports policies restricting transgender athletes in top women's competition, including rugby union, cycling, and Australian rules football. Mm -hmm. The International Olympic Committee, however, Said in, a no, said in November that no athlete should be excluded from competition on the grounds of a perceived unfair advantage while leaving it up to sports federations to decide. The International Cycling Union said last week it had tightened its eligibility rules. Other sports are reviewing their policies. World Soccer governing body FIFA said it is in consultation over transgender participation while World Athletics boss Sebastian Coe praised FINA for its stance. Ian Roberts, the first elite rugby, rugby, lead, rugby league player mm -hmm. to come out as gay, said transgender athletes should be welcomed into the sport and likened concerns about their participation to the homophobia he experienced in the 1990s. Yeah. This is almost like the modern day equivalent the 56-year-old told Reuters. So uh, now let's go probe a little more deeply into the Oslo shooting. Two people were killed and eight others taken to the hospital after the shooting near the Lincoln Pub, which describes itself and its website as the largest gay and lesbian venue in Oslo. Among the eight in the hospital, three people are in critical condition. Another 14 victims sustained minor injuries. In a statement published on Facebook after the shooting, the London pub condemned the incident as absolutely awful and pure evil. The bar said all the employees were safe and expressed condolences to the victims and their families. We will follow, and this is such a difficult decision, we will follow the police's recommendations and take care of each other. We will love, uh, our warm thoughts and love go to relatives, the injured, and others attached, said the leader of Oslo Pride, 
Inger Kristen Hauskov and the leader of the Association for Gender and Sexuality Diversity, Inga Gutsvan. They said this in a joint statement. We will soon be proud and visible again, but today we will hold and share the pride celebrations from home. Norwegian Prime Minister Jonas Garstor also expressed condolences to the victims, calling this shooting a cruel and deeply shocking um, attack on innocent people. And this is an important thing, I think. He reiterated that the perpetrator belonged to an important Islamic environment, belonged to an Islamic environment, but emphasized that if this is Islamic terror, as the Norwegian police point out, then many Muslims will feel vulnerable today and in the time ahead. And I know that many Muslims in our country are also scared and in despair. It is our common responsibility to make it clear that no one other than the person or the people behind the attack is responsible for it. Mm. So I think that's an important point yeah. that the Prime Minister made. And, you know, I've seen articles, we can't back, back down in the face of terrorist attack, but safety is important too. Yeah. So. That's always been the balance. <coughs> I know. Well, he probably had a small pistol if it was the United States. Well, he had two guns, but they didn't killed. say what kind. He, yeah. he did have two guns. Um, although, I don't know if they were assault weapons. Um, I would like to go next. Do I have time? You have a f one more minute. One more minute? Yeah, two more maybe. All right, let's talk about Nigeria. May, may I? Yeah. Pride Month means a day to celebrate my queerness because most of the month I'm fighting, struggling, and pushing back at society, said Victor Emmanuel, a 24-year-old who runs For Fag's Sake YouTube channel <laughs> about Nigerian LGBTQ issues. It's when I can actually sit and celebrate. Now, you know that Nigeria is a deeply religious country where many reject homosexuality as a corrupting Western import. In 2024, the Same-Sex Marriage Prohibition Act was signed into law, which bars not only gay relationships, but also any public sign of same-sex affection or membership in LGBTQ plus groups with punishments of up to 14 years in prison. Yes. Gay sex is illegal in more than half of African countries, according to the global LGBTQ rights trackers, although Gabon, Kenya, and Botswana have all decriminalized same-sex relations in recent years. But despite the risks, activists are pushing to express themselves and demand change this June, a month which is marked around the world with LGBTQ plus prides and pride celebrations and parties. Nar Nigerian LGBTQ pride events have been growing in number and size in recent years, and although they remain behind closed doors due to safety and legal concerns, celebrations this year are centered around the week-long pride of, in Lagos, uh, an event which will include art exhibitions, a drag contest, and a ball. Yeah. While there have been no convictions under the Same-Sex Marriage Act, rights groups and activists say it effectively sanctions abuses of LGBTQ people and has emboldened both police officers and members of the public to carry out attacks. Um, the legislation amounts to carefully constructed state violence, which exacerbates queer phobia and prevents us from having a community, said the head of the Queer Union for Economic and Social Transformation. And I have a picture I'd like to show again, if, I, if you don't mind, of Coyote, Coyote Ani Sambakchu. And there he is holding his placard um, of the, about at this Nigerian protest in May. LGBTQ people are growing increasingly vocal and visible with the internet providing a space for gay-friendly films, talk shows, and websites. May I continue? Well, I think we could get back to you if we have time. Okay, but I just have a few more things about attitude shifting, but you get the drift. Things are improving, <laughs> although pretty rough. Thank you, Ann. My pleasure. Now, the first story I have I don't know, 
that it is specific to our community, but when you hear the details, it's going to sound very familiar. In Barrie, 14-year-old student walking on the bike path encounters a group of peers, and all of a sudden, one person within the group starts assaulting him, and then the whole group assaults him, mm. Mm. and he ends up first in the emergency room, then transferred to Fletcher Allen in Burlington with significant injuries. He, he is recovering. He is back home. The school says they've seen nothing like this before. Oh. And they are still actively investigating. But as of the last report I read, they said, we have no idea what precipitated this incident. Uh huh. But to us, doesn't this sound just a little too familiar? So mm -hmm. we'll see how it but, develops. Exactly. But following up on that, the Canaan School District, Northeast Kingdom in Vermont, they took a parent into custody after he was making statements at a store in New Hampshire, which is across the 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 state line, talking about threatened to show up and kill anybody if his child was approached by a transgender person or a drag queen at school. Oh my gosh. And then went on to say, don't take what I said as a threat, take it as a promise. That was his statement to the police. <sighs> so even though it happened in New Hampshire and they were pursuing it, the state's attorney here in Vermont went and got the extreme protection order so they could search his home. And, and what did they find? That, no, they, fa they found no weapons. Mm -hmm. However, he said, you know, you, I intend to exercise my right to own a firearm, and I plan on purchasing an AK-47. Mm. Who reported him? Somebody in the store? Yes. Wow to students in the store who recognized him. They were part of the school district because, you know, in that part of Vermont, Vermont, New Hampshire, yeah. they share, which is, takes us right into the other Supreme Court case that was decided. And this impacted mm -hmm. the case coming out of Maine of Carson versus Macon, where and, and the ruling is only going to have a real direct impact on Maine and Vermont. What had occurred is that there were parts of Maine that did not have their own school district. They did not have a school. They were too rural. They didn't have a school within their district. So they were given vouchers, and your child could go to the school of their choice. However, faith-based parochial schools, no, 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 you can't use public money to fund a religious institution, right. separation of church and state. Well, our Supreme Court decided that that vo uh, violated the Equal Protections Clause of the First Amendment, and if you're going to allow a voucher, everybody gets to be part of the playing field. You cannot just indiscriminately factor someone out. And that reminded me of the Philadelphia case with the adoption agency, mm -hmm. where if you're going to allow funding, you have to do it uniformly. <clears throat> you cannot do restrictions. What the Maine Attorney General has said in response to the ruling is they're going to be looking at, OK, we have to include a community faith-based parochial school as part of the mix. But what if the school is in violation of the state's non-discrimination laws? Is that a prohibiting factor? And looking at, in Vermont, there is approved, accredited, and certified for private schools. And the conversation I heard within our legislators is going back in and looking at picking up the legislation <coughs> that they had withheld last year because they were waiting for this ruling. And is there a way of putting into the funding formula that you have to be an accredited versus a certified school 
and part of that accreditation is that the non-discrimination laws in Vermont are fully in effect in your educational institute. So your materials can't say homosexuality is deviant and an aberration and that marriage is only a man and a woman. So we'll see what happens. But one of the things that I found really interesting reading about the decision is, and I didn't appreciate this, approximately two-thirds of all public schools, uh, all private schools in our country are faith-based. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. I, well, I was surprised it was that high. Yeah. But there we go. So but the Didn't other... they pass a prayer thing, too? Like, now they... Well, no, no, yeah. That, that was the coach who was yeah, kneeling he... on the 50-yard line after a game and asking his play, prayer players to join him in prayer and actually what was interesting about that ruling and it was Gorshik who wrote it is he described it as the coach was kneeling and praying in private <laughs> and that and that's <laughs> what well and that's what their decision was based on but now they can pray at football games and yes okay. and I mean it's in breaking public it. schools right mm -hmm. The, the other thing that happened in May, <clears throat> Marie King, and we, we reported on this last fall, I think it was, transgender woman who was denied um, access to the Sunrise Assisted Living. Right. They ruled in her favor. Finally. And there is an agreement with the company that, that runs and maintains the assisted living communities about training and non-discrimination policies mm. and all of the things that they are now going to be required to do to make this an open, inclusive, and welcoming environment mm. and the things that they have to post on their website. And, you know, I've included a, a picture of Marie King yeah. Good. With, with her decision. The last, the last real quick, and, and this is for Linda. Because, you know, it's her former, you know, stomping grounds, the, you know... Chelsea? Hi the Hyde Park region of Boston. Uh-huh. And we reported on this before. The Pride, $47 million project, mm. will be completed. They're hoping next spring they bought this old, wonderful school, and it's going to be our first... New England LGBTQ oh, plus wow. senior housing. Okay, in Hyde Park. The Hyde Park region of Boston. How, how do we apply? <laughs> oh, they, they actually, as part of the news release, they said, okay, if you want to get in the application process and the waiting list. But, and I, again, I found a, a artist rendering of what the facility will look like. Forty-seven million. They're ready for us. I'm doing. This Where is Hyde Park. Park in Boston? It's near Jamaica Plain. It's oh, not that okay. way. Yeah. Um, we need it here. Yeah. Okay. I hear Vermont College may be going up. Oh yeah, that for would sale, be a perfect so spot, we, wouldn't it? Zach, we could be your new landlords. <laughs> right. Okay, it's yours. And you know, um, or Zach could rent to us. Yeah, we could move in here. Well, okay, all right. Got, all right. We got stories. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The question here is, did the police help the Proud Boys to shop a drag queen story hour? Yes. The answer the is answer yes. The answer is alleged. Of course, yeah. That they did. And this took place in North Carolina. The Pine Valley Library in Wilmington was hosting the story hour. Yeah. They called the police because... The Cape Fear Proud Boys were outside demonstrating. Several masked men entered the library and allegedly uttering anti-LGBT slurs and tried to get in the room where the drag queens were. Of course, some attendees claims claim uh, that the sheriff showed the men where the room was. A familiar story, and huh? Of course, the sheriff strongly denies this. So, okay. 
Ah, all right. Well, we'll see. GOP senator considers blocking school meal funding over LGBTQ rights. Yeah, that's about it. Roger Marshall said he may obstruct funds due to new guidelines by the Biden administration that mm. bans LGBTQ discrimination in programs such as the General Nutrition Program. Roger, who is a representative from Kansas, is joined, now this is an illustrious group, <laughs> Governor Christie, Ah. <laughs> Former. Gnome. Oh, Chris. Oh, Governor Christie Gnome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought Governor Chris Christie is back and in Ron office. And Ron DeSantis, Governor of Florida. So they are a illustrious Christie Gnome. group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a man was arrested after making death threats against a local pride event. Mm. He was arrested after making anti-LGBTQ statements and death threats against the local community over an upcoming Pride event. Tyler Dismore, 27, from Oak Harbor, Virginia, uh, Washington, was taken into custody and charged with malicious, malicious harassment with a hate crime. Mm. Joe Fryer is named Journalist of the Year by, L, by LBGTQ news organizations. He's on the Saturday Today Show host. So, uh, oh, this is, um, I, this seems like a lot of time to me, but I don't know. I mean, even for this horrendous act. But Jonathan Burns has been arrested for felony vandalism. As authorities said, he sprayed, he spray painted the pride section of a Target store in Knoxville, Tennessee. He is accused of causing over $3,000 worth of damage. And he's being charged with a Class D felony and mm -hmm. could get 12 years in prison. Yes. That seems like a lot of this. Well, no, thing. it's just that would be the, the sentence for, for, the, for the classification of crime. The judge okay. always has the discretion of how much. Yeah. But, I mean, and I'm once not, you're in a hate crime category, yeah, you can really have the books thrown at you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Meet it, new friends. <laughs> yeah. And in San Francisco, apparently, someone maced yeah. the crowd. As pride? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And, and people thought they heard gunshots. And so, so everybody started to run, and there was oh, panic. You're kidding. Because people started yelling, gun, 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 and... They scat Everybody scattered. Oh, how Even awful. Even the police scattered. Yeah. How awful that yeah. is. I didn't know that. Yeah. And trans women of color are killed in Wisconsin and North Carolina. Both mm. Sasha Mason and Brazil Johnson were victims of gun violence. Where in Wisconsin, where in these places? In Wisconsin and North Carolina, I don't know what city specifically. Mm. And Brittany Grinder is up for trial in Russia next week. But you know, the really interesting thing there is I heard that only 1% of people who go on trial in Russia actually get acquitted. I'm surprised it's that much. I don't know. I mean, they're talking about negotiations behind <clears throat> yeah. the scene. You I hope they stop can... sending guns to. You no. Know. No negotiations about Griner. And I know, base. but the negotiation will be: you stop sending guns to uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine, and we'll let her go. Oh, okay. Well. In Gaston County, North. Carolina, two men featured in a photo kissing are, is removed from the museum. Yes. <laughs> the photo shows Justin and Bren Hip kissing during a Charlotte Pride Parade. Yep. The county manager also removed the photo of a black woman being cuffed by police while on the ground. Grant Baldwin is a freelance photojournalist whose exhibit exhibition it was. Oh, for heaven's sake. And, heaven and one of the members of the city council said that they wanted to defund the museum. Oh, that sounds like the old days. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. They're bad. I know. So that's it for me. A lot of good news in the country. I could go back and talk about Nigeria. Well... Keith has to do his trivia. Yeah, let's. I'll I'll do the trivia, and then we may be going yes. back to Nigeria. Yeah. So, be ready. 
So July 3rd, Disobedience Day. Mm -hmm. And I had to find something that would match it. This is believed to have been, or this is what is documented as being the first organized gay rights protest in the U.S. September 19th, 1964. And it wasn't in Washington, D.C. It was in Manhattan. It was in front of the Army Building on White House Street. And it was in protest of the dishonorable discharges of LGBTQ plus service people. And what they had, what they had for- Was that Eisenhower? Was Eisenhower president? 64? No, six Just feet. before Kennedy, right? No, no. that's uh, Johnson. That's John LBJ. LB, oh, I was yeah. going to say, that's LBJ. Okay. No, it's, in, in 1964, this is what is documented, and there may have been more. There were over 2,400 mm. service members wow. who were dishonorably discharged, which was approximately 1,500 more than at the height of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And they did so. a lot during the Eisenhower, too. There was that purge. Okay, that's, that's the Lavender Scare, and that yeah. was part of the McCarthy era. Yeah. And they're looking at issue. Well, Canada has issued an <coughs> apology, and they're looking at doing reparations. We can barely get past the apology stage, oh. but okay. No. You have two minutes. All right. About six. And she's timing you. <laughs> about sixty percent of Nigerians said they would not accept a family member who was LGBT, down from eighty-three percent in twenty seventeen. <laughs> found a twenty nineteen poll commissioned by a Nigerian rights group. Three quarters of respondents said they supported the Same-Sex Prohibition Act, but that has dropped 12% within four Progress. years. Progress. Technology has helped to amplify the visibility of LGBTQ plus persons, said an activist. Uh, added, the person whose picture I showed you before, we are still at the beginning stages. If we don't fight for rights, it's not going to happen. Exactly. So... Well, it sounds like the numbers are at least getting better instead of not getting worse. That's right. That's so right. that's improvement. Right. And your advice to them is? Always to resist. Resist.